I have absolutely scoured the internet looking for a guide on how to do valve adjustments on a three-cylinder Kubota. There's a lot of information out there and the videos I've seen have not been very clear so I'm going to do my best to break it down as I learn. So if you're watching this it means I mostly got it right. For disassembly the tools we're going to need it's going to be a seven millimeter and then a deep well 10 millimeter. All right, I've got this tripod mounted on the steering wheel. This is towards the seat. This is towards the front of the vehicle. The firing order or the cylinder number is one, two, three. Three towards the front bumper. I don't recommend using a tool like this. I'm using it for taking these off only. I will use a ratchet for putting them back on. Otherwise, you run the risk of over torquing. You want to unplug your battery, or in my case, the previous owner had this thing rigged so I don't really have to worry about getting arcs right now. Each of these are seven millimeters. This is something you do not want to over tighten. Pull this guy out and just get him completely out of the way. Take that out of the equation. These washers are a little hard to get to until you clear the studs. All right, just gonna move that off to the side. Cylinder one, cylinder two, cylinder three. And we need to identify top dead center which is going to be on the first cylinder. Again, these just came out recently. That's the only reason I'm willing to do this with a tool and I'm only doing it for loosening. Be conscious not to get particles inside as best you can. And I'd also recommend having a new valve cover gasket. I have one on order, but it won't be here for this. In fact, I think I'll throw a part number down there for you because I just happen to have it. So by taking these glow plugs out, we now have these cylinders with no compression, which will make it easier to move the uh, the, which will make it easier to get to TDC. TDC being top dead center. I'm going to take this, probably should get a little bit cleaner, but I'm going to drop this into cylinder one. I can feel the pistons near the top. Okay, now you don't have a good perspective here, but this is going to move up and down as we rotate cylinder. So I want to find the place where as I rotate it's at the highest position. So using some indicator like this I've determined at what point this is at its highest. So TDC is top dead center on cylinder one. That's with the piston on the inside at its highest position. Now it's going to do that two times. So that TDC is what I'm trying to achieve. I should have loose valves. So these are loose, they've got some play. Now, if I cycle it down and back up one more time, these are gonna be tight. So there's two positions we're gonna be making adjustments in. And right now I believe we are in the correct position. So in attempting to keep things simple, we know that this is the exhaust side and this is the intake side. Now, I drew this out in a way that isn't going to work, so I'm gonna redraw that and edit it here. But 
For the first adjustment, we're going to adjust both the intake and outtake on cylinder one. On cylinder two, we're only doing the exhaust. On cylinder three, we're doing only the intake. So this is intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust. This calls for that right there. 6,000, it's like something between five and seven. So that's just what we need, six thousandths. And we take the feeler gauge and we're supposed to be able to fit it in between here. Well, that means it's at least 6,000 here, but they could be a bit loose, which is what they feel like. And in fact, I've got an eight and I'm getting clearance with that. That means we are quite a ways out of the adjustment on all these, especially that one. Let's try a 10 thousandths. Yep, so that's about where it needs to be at six thousandths, and that was a 10. So at this point, we need a flathead and a 10 millimeter wrench. Use the flathead to secure the, the screw. Carefully loosen the nut. Now we're going to take the six thousandths gauge. I'm adjusting that flat head with my fingers. And you want to have just a bit of friction. I'm making it pretty snug at six thousand because that was the range five to seven. We put it at six, so a little bit snug. Like this is just fine. I feel a little bit of friction with an angle. Now I'm going to leave. The feeler gauge right there, kind of keep a reference for the angle of the, where the flathead's going. Snug down the nut with the flathead in position, and then just confirm that we've got the clearance we need. That's feeling a little more loose now that I've tightened it. There we go. So I just took that and turned it just a few degrees and re-snugged it and it was just right. All right, we're at version like four of this. So top dead center, cylinder one, cylinder two, cylinder three. Forward is the bumper, driver seat's back here. Same for both of these. So the first run is the TDC, intake, exhaust for cylinder one, exhaust for cylinder two, intake for cylinder three. Rotate the engine, rotate it up front with a big flywheel, rotate that 360 degrees, that'll again, with your marker, put this uh, at the cylinder, that marker will be at the very top, okay? So get it to the top, and then you're gonna go to cylinder one, you do nothing. Cylinder two, go to the intake, adjust it. Cylinder three, go to the exhaust and adjust it. Now the previous owner screwed up a bunch of the wiring on this one, so I'm working through a lot of that right now. I did not diagnose a fuel pump, the electric fuel pump in the back that wasn't working. So right now I'm hooking that up manually, bypassing the factory circuitry. I'm still undoing what was done. Now this part's a little sketchy. I'm doing the jump with the screwdriver on the alternator, which is not my favorite. But I gotta do it.
voila. It's actually a good test. I didn't even uh, have to cycle the glow plugs because that circuit's out. There we go. We'll let that run for a little bit. And uh, start replacing all the other things that are messed up, like the alternator bracket and the bad belts. And uh, go through all the wiring. Hope this video has been helpful.